before we look at the solution for the GPA calculator, let's first quickly talk about how GPA is calculated. Now, most of you probably already know how this is done, but for those of you that don't, GPA is calculated by first assigning a numerical value to each letter grade. So A would be 4, B would be 3, C would be 2, D would be 1, and F would be 0. Next, you would gather up all your grades, assign the corresponding numerical value to each grade, add up the sum of these values, and take the average. And that average would be your GPA. Now that we know that, let's go ahead and take a look at our GPA calculator solution. Skimming through it real quick, we could see that we use a few different techniques that we've learned in previous videos in this series. But let's just go ahead and start at the first statement here and take a detailed look at the various statements used to create this program. So starting off with the first statement, we could see that we initialize a string object variable that we name grade, and we initialize it to an empty string. Next, we initialize a variable of type int. We call it count, and we initialize it to a value of 0. And next, we initialize a double variable that we call sum to 0. After that, we initialize a scanner object that we call input. And if you remember, the scanner object input will be used to receive user input from the console. After that, we have a while loop. The while loop begins with the reserved word while, followed by a condition in parentheses. Looking at this condition, we could see that our variable grade utilizes a method of the string class called equals to compare the value starting grade to the string capital Q. And you could see that we have the not operator in front of this. So what this actually does is says, well, grade does not equal Q. Execute this block statement. And since we initialize our grade variable to an empty string, when this statement is executed for the first time, the value starting grade will not be a capital Q. It will be an empty string. So the block statement will be entered. And within our block statement, you can see the first statement is a print line statement that prompts the user to enter a letter grade. And it's important to know that the user can only enter these specific values for the program to work. If the user inputs a lowercase a or a string of characters or a number, our program will not work correctly. Now there are ways that we can program to account for these issues and uh, act accordingly. But for this specific program here, we're going to keep it simple. So we're only going to program to work with the specific values of these capital letters here. All right, so after the print line statement is executed, you can see that our input variable uses the next method in the scanner class to receive user input from the console. And then that user input is going to be stored in the variable grade. Next, we have a series of if and else if statements. These statements are essentially connected in that the block statement to be executed will be determined on the value inputted to the console and stored in the variable grade. Now in each of these block statements, we can see that the count variable is always incremented by 1, but the sum variable is incremented to a specific value based upon the value that the user input. So if the user input a capital A, the sum variable is incremented by 4 using the addition assignment operator. If they enter a capital B, then sum is incremented by 3, C incremented by 2, D incremented by 1, and then F, notice that we don't increment by anything, we just add one to our count variable. Now after one of these block statements is executed, we return to the top of this while loop and the value stored in grade is once again evaluated and if it does not equal a capital Q, then we enter the block statement again. And this will continue until the user finally inputs a value of capital Q. Now exiting out of this while loop, you can see that we close our scanner object and we perform the GPA calculation and that's taking the value stored in sum and dividing it by the value stored in count. And lastly, we print out the GPA to the console. Running this program, we could see that we can enter as many letter grades as we want. When we are finished entering letter grades, we will go ahead and enter a capital Q, and our GPA is calculated and displayed to the console. Keep in mind, this is not the only way to create this program, and it is not the best way to create this program. This example was only used to incorporate various different techniques that we've used in this uh, tutorial series at this point. 